So now in this video, we're going to look at uh, this relay module. So to begin with, this is a 12 volt relay. So we will look at that. That's what I have powering it right now. 12 volts from my bench power supply. The uh, load though is 5 volts. The load is not a set voltage. This can go up to 250 volts at 10 amps or 150 volts at 15 amps. So just uh, realize we have 12 volts coming to the relay at this moment. So we will zoom in and get a little better look. And so the power is coming to these alligator clips from the bench power supply. I have 5 volts for uh, powering the LEDs. This is just a switch now for the uh, power supply there for powering the LEDs. That LED is already on. Right now we have this set to trigger when we give a high signal to the input. And there you can see it triggered. So it turned off. We have a normally closed switch right there. That's why the LED is on when nothing's happening. This one's normally open. That's why it's off when nothing's happening. Now we go to the unnormal state where we have a signal that triggered the uh, switch. It switched the switch and you can see now that LED is on and that one's off. And we have a LED there to show that we are on the on state. But there we go. So it's on because this switch is normally closed. It's in its normal position and that side is in its normal position which is normally open. Now if we give it a low signal, nothing will happen right now. We can actually change that. And uh, that's one reason why I got this module. So there's a little jumper here. I'm going to move it over one spot. So now we give it a high signal of 12 volts. Nothing happens right there. We give it a low signal of uh, 0 volts. And you can see that now it uh, switched states there. So. You can wire this up to work with the normally closed switch as we see there or you could just wire these two up for the normally open switch right there or as you can see here you can wire both of them up if you want. You don't have to use both of them and this one is uh, labeled pretty clearly. We'll uh, zoom in to the board now. Actually before we zoom into the board let's look at current. So. I'm going to set the meter to measure milliamps. Now I already set the uh, power supply so that it would only output about 500 milliamps of current. And we can see that by short circuiting this only short circuit a power supply if you absolutely know you limited the current. In fact it's best never to short the uh, power supply. But there you can see that LED went out because we cut power from the board all the currents going through the meter so there's uh, no voltage build up. There you can see it's below 500 milliamps of current so we just want to do that as short of a period of time as we need to. So in any case I'm going to remove the alligator clip from the power supply on the positive side and put it to that uh, probe there from the uh, multimeter. Now I can just touch. I can finish wiring up the uh, positive power through the meter like that. Now you see that the LED is on. So just doing nothing you can see here we're using up 4.6 milliamps of current from the uh, power supply there. This load is all independent on the power supply, uh, the resistors we're using and whether the switch is on or off and so it's two separate power supplies. That's the nice thing about the relay. We isolated these circuits other than a switch that, that turns one on or off. Now it is on the active low so if I touch that nothing is going to happen with the positive. We will go to the active low first and you can see now the 12 volt power supply is using about 40 milliamps of current. So that's to power everything those two LEDs you see on the uh, coil in there to move the electromagnet while current is flowing through it. So that gives you an idea of how long if you're using a 12 volt battery or something how long it could last. That's how much current it is using. And of course we can uh, remove this jumper to uh, make it 
so it is active high for the uh, trigger there we go and now I will uh, complete this again you'll see that LED come on and now we are passing current again through the uh, bench power supply and so now it's active high you can see that we have 40 milliamps of current when we give 12 volts right there and as I said before I can go down to 8 volts if we give it a low signal of course nothing happens at all and the current doesn't change or anything there you go I was actually missing it but uh, there you go so it's using about 5 milliamps of current well it isn't doing anything and the uh, oh that's right there you go well it's not doing anything it is lighting this LED though so that's probably a lot of it and when uh, it's triggered then it's using about 40 milliamps of current so there's always some current coming from the power supply but not a whole lot we can actually get a whole lot more current through here so it's up to 15 or uh, up to uh, 10 amps with 250 volt AC and so I'm guessing it's probably about that same amount of current for probably about 30 volts DC you want to check with the uh, the manufacturer but in any case you can control a lot of current in this case we're actually controlling uh, less current than what we are using to control it but you can use this to control a much higher voltage and current than what you are using you want to use about 12 volts to uh, control the module here which controls the relay but you can control a high voltage source as long as you know how to do so safely don't uh, do that until you actually learn how to use high voltages I don't teach that and uh, I don't really want to work with high voltages directly so now as I said before we'll look at the module up close and it's really straightforward so here is what we had what we were switching so we put the uh, com to the negative side of the power supply and the uh, normally connected that's what NC stands for part of the switch so right now it's connected across these two that's its resting position and we had that going to one of the LEDs and a protective resistor to the positive side of the power supply so that was on unless we uh, did something and so we could do that now with just just sitting here we could connect something it would be on the uh, other LED came to the normally open one the one the LED that was off until we gave the proper signal right there so normally open you put that to one that you want to a circuit you want off until you give the proper signal to uh, switch the relay and there you can see the uh, voltages it's a 12 volt DC there you can see its AC currents so you can go up to 125 volts AC and run 15 amps through here if you know how to do so safely and the uh, you'd have to look at the manufacturer to see the DC uh, rating but in any case that's something you want to look up if uh, you're going to use that for DC so I don't plan on powering anything that high power in the near future so I didn't really bother to pay a ton of attention to that so in any case there you can see you gotta power this so you just plug the uh, in this case 12 volt power supply as I said before I got it to work down to 8 volts and uh, you just plug that in directly and then you can give a full signal to the uh, input as you can see we needed about uh, 35 milliamps of current in addition to uh, what we had here we had about 5 milliamps of current just powering it while it was sitting around and when we inputted the signal all of a sudden we needed about uh, 40 milliamps total so you want to make sure you can provide at least that much current and so you don't need a power supply that can provide a lot of current just about 40 milliamps of current and uh, you'll be fine now the jumper I moved it's right there you can see it's at H right now you just slide that off so that's a high signal to uh, switch this from the normal state you need a high signal right now so about 12 volts I'm not sure how low you can go probably to 8 volts I'm guessing and then you move it over to here then you need to give the input here a low signal for it to switch so a high signal will keep it off or if you don't give it any signal at all it will keep it off but a low signal uh, I'm not sure how low it has to be but we use zero volts here the uh, negative rail that switched it 
with the lower there. Now, I have this plastic. I don't need it right now. That's the plastic it came in and uh, helps helps prevent uh, static. So in any case, there's a bunch of pins showing down here. And so I don't want to accidentally make a connection to uh, any of these points. And uh, there you can see that uh, some of the traces and stuff. But in uh, any case, that's a uh, close up for that. So hope you found that interesting. Relay is pretty simple, especially these modules. Trying to wire up stuff directly to the relay is uh, quite a bit more complicated. There's a bunch of uh, pins on the uh, bottom. But in uh, any case, these relay modules, they're actually about the same price as just buying the relay itself. And so unless you absolutely need the just the relay and the module just it has stuff you don't need, I suggest just getting the whole module. It's only a little bit more than the price of the relay. And so trying to build all this yourself is going to cost a lot more than just the price of the relay so buying it pre-made unit like this is uh, the way to go in my opinion I don't do a lot with relays but I have a whole bunch of these relays now so I hope to uh, change that in the future so hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one